about it. Depending on who you believe, <coughs> much of the Kabbalah was assembled in the 11th and 12th century by Spanish Jews and then backdated to some texts from the, maybe the 2nd century of the Christian era do mention gematria, the calculation of, uh, of... But it's pretty light. That's the historical explanation of the, the rise of Kabbalah. I prefer the, you know, what a rabbi would tell you, which is not true, but it deserves to be true. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Kabbalah, yeah, the Torah, was written in the language of the angels and God. In black fire upon white fire before time itself started. That's the word. Yeah. And everybody who's trying to sell you some sort of mystic horse has to sell you this, don't they? You know, the Freemasons trace themselves back to the Temple of Solomon, I believe. And, you know, and the Sufis have to say, no, we actually predate Islam. We go back far, far further than that. You know? Everybody likes to have their roots. Yeah, we go back to the dinosaurs. You know? mm -hmm. Our ancient wisdom is more ancient than your ancient wisdom ever was. This is always part of the sales pitch. Um, so I don't think it's true that Kabbalah and the analysis of the Hebrew language goes back to the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden. Um, but I like the story that this knowledge was given to Adam himself, either, interestingly, either by God in the Garden of Eden or by the fallen angels to help man after he was expelled from the Garden of Eden. They're both lovely stories, aren't they? They're both lovely stories. By analysis of the Hebrew alphabet, we can make certain connections with an outside of normal human experience. This is the broad claim. Robert was steeped in this. He grew up with uh, religious Eastern European Jews who would know this stuff inside out. His first large major public work began with this wonderful thing. And this is an early plan for it where he's based upon the, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. Now, there are no vowels in the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph is not an A. Aleph, there's a sign for it. It's like a, a line across and a tiny, like a, an apostrophe above and an apostrophe below. A Yud, a Yud and a Vav. Yeah? So in some ways it looks like it's made with three other letters. And this is meant to be incredibly symbolic of God separating the upper and the lower waters on the day of creation. And the Torah, you know, sort of dividing the divine and the human. It's meant to be symbolic of all sorts of things. A cynic would say it's actually just accidentally that shape because that was the Canaanite hieroglyph for the head of an ox. Which is... <laughs> I, I prefer the, the upper and lower waters. Even though it's not true, it deserves to be true. I think, without deflating Robert's explanation uh, uh, of why he chose the Aleph, the Aleph is, like I say, it's not a letter A, it's, without getting too philosophical, it's like the transcendental condition of possibility for speech. It's the, the silence before the A of Apple. It's like the frame of the painting, it's like that which lets the painting be a painting. It's the edge of language, the Aleph. Yeah. This is the shape of an Aleph, with a line across here, and a Yud here, and a Yud here. I think, without deflating his claims for the, 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 the Kabbalistic importance of his composition, I think he was actually being very clever. And those of you who know this piece from its glory days, because of natural light, which Robert detested natural light, uh, he really didn't like natural light, he liked to control all the lights in the studio as best he could. Out here he couldn't control the light. You would always get a dark shadow falling from the top left down to the bottom right on this particular building. So he knew that line was going to be there anyway. And so he made the best of it and thought, let's make that a compositional element. It's going to be there unless the planets change their course. This is magic. As above, so below. As below, so above. It's about the harmonious tuning of the composition of your painting with the movements of the sun. The big pentagram and the little pentagram. The heavenly bodies are moving thus. Let's surf with them rather than swim against them. And let's get over the word magic. Yeah? It's about a harmonious alignment of the big patterns and the small patterns. I'm happy with that. <laughs>